but the site itself is aligned on a 31 degrees east longitudinal line. There's Adam's calendar or Adam's pyramids. Great Zimbabwe, if you extend the line, you get to Great Pyramid of Giza. It's all aligned beautifully along 31 degrees east. And uh, that tells us that whatever is going on here, it was a very, very important longitudinal positioning for those ancients that put all these structures together. Those guys and their loincloths and their hammers and stone hammers and chisels. These, they were really busy. They were up and down that line. They didn't stop. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so what is all this activity about in Southern Africa? And it's always about one thing. It's always about the gold. And that's the, the spectacular thing. You know, we forget, often forget that the Egyptian empire was all about the gold as well. You know, the Egyptians had so much gold, they were putting it on the pyramids, were, everything was made from bloody gold. Remember, even when the, when the Israelites were leaving, uh, when the Hebrews were leaving Egypt, if that event ever happened, because you know that there's no real evidence that that actually is a historic event, you know, now whew, there's another whole page we can open about the lies and deceptions, right? So, it, remember that they were told by God to go and raid the Egyptians' homes and steal all the gold, take all their gold, because you're going to need it when we get to the desert. So, it's all about the gold. The Egyptian empire is all about the gold, and we forget about that. Um, I was astounded when, when we got um, into this desert town, and I forget wh where it was, what the town was called, where they discovered hundreds of golden mummies made of solid gold in Egypt. And I forget what the name of the town is. It's just, and you start realizing, oh, it's all about the gold. And Southern Africa, especially, is all about the gold. In the late 1400s, when the Portuguese first came around the Cape of Good Hope on their way to India, they, they met uh, a lot of native tribes from the Mozambican side. And they, they also found a lot of uh, ancient stone ruins. This is Great Zimbabwe, by the way, from a side view of Great Zimbabwe. And uh, when they asked the, 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 the locals what, you know, whose land is this, they were given a very unusual bit of information. They said it was known as, it was called the Terra dos Makomates, or the land of the Makomati people. And the Makomati people were Dravidian gold miners from southern India. Gold miners and gold merchants. They were already there in southern Africa Seemingly, before these other tribes, African tribes, came and settled there, that land was already occupied by the Dravidians mining and trading with gold, with the East. And now this is definitely not information you're going to find in any Eurocentric history book. right? But the, the gold mining goes back much further in time. Um, 700 AD, there's some spectacular information in the museum in Zanzibar, how the gold trade was already very, very strong between Zanzibar and Southern Africa, and specifically the port of Sofala, which is in Mozambique, um, which is near the town of Baira in Mozambique today. And the, then we meet uh, in the 11th century, Ahmed al Biruni describes the prosperous gold exports from the port of Sofala. There you can see it over there, Sofala. This is a 16th century Portuguese map. Um, that shows all that. And it describes that the gold was a, a month's journey inland from the port of Sofala. And this is a map again, the 16th century Portuguese map of the port of Sofala. It was a busy, busy place. Um, and uh, a well-known place where gold was exported to the rest of the world. And what happens if you go one month inland from Sofala? There you go, there's Baira. It's today's Baira in Mozambique. And if you go one month, one month journey inland, you get to about there, and that's Masvingo in Zimbabwe. And what is it, Masvingo, Zimbabwe? The great Zimbabwe ruins. And we meet the great Monomotapa kingdom, the, the golden kings, they were never defeated. The house of stone, Zimbabwe. And we meet the Monomotapa kingdom, and it seems that those are the guys that were responsible for all the gold that was being exported for a long, long time, and it's most likely that that's where King Solomon got all his gold, and the, the, the whole story of Sheba and all the gold somehow can be related to them. Is there any evidence of ancient gold mines that produced all this gold in Southern Africa? Of course there is. 
because wherever there are stone circles, there are gold mines. And uh, there was a geological survey done in uh, between 2005 and 2010, and I was given this information by a geologist in the town of Nelspreit uh, when I was doing a workshop there, and he said he was part of the survey, and uh, Anglo-American performed a survey, and they found that there were 75,000 of these kind of gold mines found into the side of the sides of mountains scattered all over that area and uh, that just tells us that this is not something that was uh, you know a low level mining activity the the reason why these mines are still there because they're up against the the sides of the mountains so they probably didn't get covered by the flood that covered and destroyed much of the rest of the the um, the activity and the stone circles and so forth and uh, I just jumped to a whole other train of thought because I realized I hadn't covered that part. Uh, so the, the reason that uh, the stone circles are covered by soil and sand is because it probably was destroyed by the flood some 10 or 12,000 years ago. That's why everything is covered by sand and soil. There's sea sand sediment everywhere. We found seashells and fossilized fish in the stone circles on tops of mountains. So there's, there's loads of evidence that there must have been a large volume of of water that came through there and seawater that probably destroyed that entire civilization. So in the time of Leidenberg, which is also famous for these for these very strange and unusual um, heads, they're known as the Leidenberg heads, that are very out of place in that part of the world, <clears throat> I must tell you. And uh, in the town of Leidenberg, around that area, that's where they've uh, they counted up to 75,000 of these ancient mines.